to tell you starts from my childhood. When I was nine years old, I learned about deforestation in the Amazon. And ever since, it became my dream to go there, to live with an ancient tribe and to save the trees. At the age of 21, I was studying television at university, but I wanted more from my life. So I quit my job, I used all my savings, I hired a cinematographer and a sound man, and I decided to make my childhood dream come true, becoming the youngest person ever to live with an Amazonian tribe, to hunt with warriors, to gather with women, to be made queen, to marry a warrior naked during my initiation ceremony. <laughs> in order to bring back the message about protecting their land from exploitation. I decided to make a documentary about the entire adventure. And this very first film defined the rest of my life, molding who I would become and what I would be doing from there on. When I first stepped into Ghana, the very first thing that caught my attention Besides the beautiful smiles and my favorite fruits perched on every corner, were the black fumes released into the air from car exhausts, black carbon em emissions. Now, I do worry about my lungs. According to the World Bank, over 17,000 people here in Ghana die annually from air pollution. On the global scale, about 12.6 million people die from environmental health risks with air pollution being the fourth highest risk factor, causing premature deaths. That's one in every 10 deaths from air pollution exposure. Living here in Ghana, I wanted to see something done about this. Through my research, I discovered incredible initiatives set up by Ghanaians in Ghana, from recycled houses made from plastic bottles to recycled baskets made from pure water sacks to even bamboo bicycles. And the very first solar plant in West Africa is right here in Ghana, with the government encouraging businesses to enter the sector, championing the use of solar power, putting Ghana on the platform with other countries noted for their use of renewable energy, such as Norway, Sweden, and even Denmark. Fighting for environmental issues the past eight years I wanted to bring my passion to Ghana and do something about it. I wanted to bring the brightest young minds in the field of renewable energy to engineer innovative ways to combat pollution in the country. How can we achieve this? By changing the way we think about energy, thus putting Ghana on the pedestal as a leader in sustainability within Africa, knowing the country's goals to operate on 10% renewable energy in terms of its energy consumption by the year 2020. I know and I'm confident that we are heading in the right direction, even if we are currently only using that 1%. And then I had this mad scientist moment when I dared to dream the idea to invent the world's first ever recycled solar car that flies. Now, I maybe know Ocean's Eleven, but I've assembled a team of the best minds in Ghana to help build this vehicle with me. This, the vehicle will run on solar power, be built from recycled materials, making history not only in Ghana or Africa, but the world. We're very excited to start making the prototype this month, experimenting with revolutionary engineering. And I'll also be getting driving and flying lessons here in Ghana. I never owned my own car before because I was waiting for something like this to be invented. I just never knew it was going to be me and it was going to be here. You know, we really do need to use what's readily available to us. This vehicle may be powered by the African sun, but solar is not its only source of power. Other renewables can be explored to run it. Now, Catapult yourselves into the future. Imagine driving and flying eco-cars in this environment. Not only will we be eradicating the old beast from our streets,
but we would have combated air pollution, thus saving power and saving lives and ultimately saving a large portion of the planet. With world leaders abandoning climate change initiatives, change doesn't need to come from the rest of the world. Change can come from Africa. Thank you.